Hi there, welcome to WP Matt. Here in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Iconbox widget comes with Elements Kit. Before getting into the user guidance, let's have a bit of idea about the Iconbox widget. It's probably most widely used widget for a website. It's hard to imagine finishing a website without using Iconbox. So let's see what makes this widget so valuable. Go ahead and open up any page with Elementor Page Builder. After that, from the widget panel, search Iconbox. Drag and drop the icon box on your page by Elements Kit. You can identify with the A Kit badge. There you can see the default style. Now let's know more about the features it offers you. On the left side, the first one is the icon. In here, you can select icon from the existing library or you can upload any SVG image. Or if you want to specifically select any image, on that time you have to go image. And there you'll have the option to select an image instead of icon. If you're not interested using any icon, neither image, on that time you have to select none. But in my case, as I want to show you, I want to use an icon. From here, I'll select a call icon. After that, you have a title box and the description box. I need more text in the description box. So what I'm doing, I'll copy everything and duplicate them. Now if you open up read more, there you have the control to enable the button. Let's enable it. And this is the default button. After that, you have the options to show this button on hover. So let's enable it and hover on this wrapper. And there you can see the button. The next control is the horizontal alignment for the button. Right now it's selected to middle, but you can put it in the left side or in the right side. But I want to keep it as it is. Then you have the button label and the URL. You can also put an icon for the button. And then you have the icon position. Let's choose an icon from here. I'll choose an arrow icon. And the icon position I want to choose is after. And the label, I want to make it explore more. Now if you open the settings, there you have enable watermark. Right now if you hover on this widget, it don't find any watermark. But if you enable the setting and hover again, they will see a watermark all the way to the right side bottom. You can also specify this watermark position. Right now it's selected to top, but let's make it to the left side. And I can hover on it. The next one is the icon position. This icon position has something to do with this call icon. Right now it's selected to top, but you can make it to the left side. On that time the icon will start from the left side and the content will start from the right side. After that you have the content alignment. Let's make it to the right side and the content will start from the right side and the icon will start from the left side. It will look suitable if I make it to the left side. Then you have the title HTML tag. From here I want to select the title to H2. After that you have another feature which is the badge. If you open it and enable the badge, you can select the best title and the best position. Let's change the best position all the way top right corner. So these are the most important settings that you'll find in the content tab. Now if you go to the style tab, there you have all the control to work with its position, color and the typography. The first one is the background. Right now there is no background but I want to use a little bit gray background here. You can also change the background on hover but I want to keep it as it is. For the gradient color or the background image, you need to select these options. After that, you have another control which is the padding. By default, it's selected to top 50 pixel, right 40 pixel, bottom 50 pixel, and the left 40 pixel. You can increase and decrease these controls. Now, in order to make you understand very clearly, let's duplicate this column. And right now, it's noticeable that the 40 pixel or 50 pixel padding around this widget is not suitable. I'll make the padding left to 20 pixel and padding right to 20 pixel. If you want to use a border, select any border type and the border width. After that, it will look visible when you select the border color. The next one is the border radius. Let's use the border radius 0 from all sides. After that, you have content. If you open it, they will have the first control that will help you to work with the icon box title. We don't need any margin for the title, but we need padding around it. So I'll use the padding left to 20 pixel. After that, the title color, title color on hover, and the typography. I'll use the title color on hover red and for the typography I'll select the font family poppins and the font size I want to use is 40 pixel. Let's make it 30 pixel. Font width bold and the transform I want to make capitalize. After that you have the options to work with line height, text decoration and the letter spacing. Let's keep these settings as it is. Then you have the description controls. From here, I want to keep the description colors as it is, but the typography, I want to use the font family Rubik, and the font size, I want to use 16 pixel. 
and that's the setting I want to keep as it is. And for the margin, I want to use margin left to 20 pixel, margin top to 10 pixel, then you have the watermark font size. Let's hover on it and this is the watermark. Let's change the watermark color white and decrease the font size from 100 pixel to 80 pixel. Then if you open the icon tab, there you have the icon color, icon background color and the border. Let's select the icon background color red and the icon color completely white. After that, the icon is passing and padding. If you increase the icon spacing from the right side to 20 pixel, there you can see you have a bit of a spacing between the icon and the content. As I have already made a spacing using margin padding for the title and the content, I'm not going to use this spacing for the icon, so I'll make it zero. Using padding, you can increase its inside spacing. Instead of using padding, I want to use the height and width. Let's increase the height to 80 pixel and the width 80 pixel. The line height. I want to make it 80 pixel so that it becomes middle in the vertically and using the vertical position control you can also work with the position of the icon but I want to keep it as it is now if you open this button there you have the control to work with its padding and the margin if I hover in it the button comes over here so what I'll do here in order to use the button properly I'll again go to the content tab read more and disable the button on hover again I'll go to style and open the button let's use the button's margin control I'll use the margin left to 20 pixel. After that, you have the button typography and the font size. And then you have the button background and the background color on hover. I'll use the button background color red. Then you have the border and the border radius. The most attractive feature for this icon box widget is the animation. You'll find this control under hover. There you'll find around 20 types of different animation. For now, I don't want to apply any of them. Now let's open the background overlay, there you have two types of overlay, overlay image and an overlay color. Let's open the overlay color and select a background type to red. After that you have overlay direction, it's selected to left to right, but let's make it top to bottom. And here I want to use the background color completely red. After opening the batch tab, you have the control to work with the batch padding, batch radius and the background. Let's change the background to red. And use a box shadow. From box shadow, you'll be able to work with the horizontal direction, vertical direction, blur, spread, and the position. Let's increase the vertical position to 10, then decrease the blur opacity. Now, what if you need two different typography for the mobile, uh, the tablet device? On that time, from the bottom, you need to select the device. I'll select mobile device, and into the mobile device, I'll click on it, then open the content. From here, from the typography, I'll decrease the font size. Then I'll go to description and font size I want to make 14 pixel. After that, I'll open icon and from here I'll decrease the icon size. Now I want to use the height to 60 pixel and width 60 pixel. Line height 60 pixel. And I don't want to use this much padding around this widget. I'll click on it, then open the icon box container, and from here I'll use padding 10 pixel from all sides. The colors I'm choosing and the changes I'm making are just for the testing purpose and to show you how it works. Now after you make these changes in mobile device, if you go to the desktop device, you'll find the same look for the desktop device, but for the mobile device, it takes a different look. So this is how you can work both of the mobile device and the desktop device. Now after you make all of your changes, don't forget to update it. The one last thing that I want to show at the end of this video is the layout kit. If you open up the layout kit by clicking this elements kit icon, then go to widget preset. Then in the left side, we scroll down and find the icon box menu. After that, you'll have some ready-made icon box layout offered by elements kit. You can use any of them. For now, I want to use this one. Open it, then click the insert button. It will take a bit of time to import this layout into our website. So this is a pre-made design that Elements Kit offers you. I hope you have understood why the icon box is important. Thank you for watching this video.